there's a big difference between like streaming streaming to entertain people and streaming just you playing a game there's like a chasm of difference between the two most people think oh if i just turn on the stream yeah and just start playing a game next thing you know they'll follow subs and donations no it works and then there's all the equipment that you need which is a whole nother thing Set up your brand. It's a lot of work. Where's the um? It's in the runway entrance yet. It's weird. Okay, I'm just gonna hold up here because I don't see any entrance sign at all. It's a bit odd. Okay, right, so inertial separators on. Flaps in the takeoff position. Heading bug. Sets the runway heading. FS economy. Got one nutter on board. Fuel's been set. Yeah, I did refuel. I did refuel. <laughs> uh, and also, your damper always stays off. Unless you're airborne, by the way. In case you didn't know. Okay, so uh, we've got V-speed set. VS 2,000 feet per minute. FMS. So departure procedure will be... Taking off on 1-3... We're taking off on 1-3 right, and then we're doing a left turn. And we need to pick up the departure procedure here. So we need to do a climbing left turn and then put it into nav mode and let it pick that up. Essentially. And then while we're in cruise, I'm going to eat some pizza, which has just been brought to me. Because I'm hungry. Approach is clear. Lights are coming on now. Nobody knows how long. Nobody lo knows how long FSE is going to be processing the backlog. Four thousand two hundred thirty-seven meters remaining. Four thousand two hundred meters. I can't be right. Surely they meant feet. Did I just mishear that? You must have said feet. Four thousand feet would make sense. Power set. Looking for 80 knots. Gears coming up. Flaps have come up, climbing left turn, initial separator's coming off now. Damper autopilot's enabled. Should now fly the procedure. Of 
cool beans. Used to work at Navy Fallon, it's a 14,000 foot runway. So it is 4,000 meters. Holy smoke. That's insane. So that should be the procedure it follows. I mean, the, the runway looks long, but not that long. Well, the elevation was 4,000 feet. That's where we're going. So we're going to come in on two zero. How are the bright green planes? I don't know, but they should be bent. Fourteen thousand feet long, apparently. That runway. So yeah, it was four thousand meters. That one three right that we just took out took off out of was fourteen thousand feet long. That's insane. That's massive. You could take off in your car with that kind of length. Stick your arms out and tilt your hands. going to do a slow banking turn now because I put it on half bank mode turn that off it'll turn sharper you run out of gears halfway down <laughs> It's so very flat round here, it's just bizarre. Yep, high summer temperatures, yeah, I agree. I mean, if they've got some really big big heavy military stuff taken off high altitude high temperatures it makes a lot of sense
We're flying to Cove. Oscar Victor Echo, which is down here. We're gonna overfly what Reno. They come into Orville. training base yeah there's a military training base but well, I reckon they've got some big stuff landing there I pre-ordered one Aquila KSB2. When's KSB2 due to release now? I really like the idea of KSB2. I just I'm just worried about what they're gonna do with it. Given that like half the dev team are no longer working on that. I wonder about the direction it's gonna go in. The original KSP didn't care if you did not understand like astrophysics if you like it just didn't care if you didn't know what an apoapsis was it didn't care <laughs> it, was like, it didn't pull any punches it didn't try to handhold you it was just building rockets is difficult right getting into orbit's hard deal with it and that attracted a cult following i've just got this feeling that KSP2 will go down that kind of hand-holding route that they go down with games, where they're like, oh, let's try to get new people in and just make it all like... They just dumb it down. So it loses the realism aspect and ends up just being this... Not arcade, but... I, ju I just worry about it, you know? I worry about the direction. That's what tends to happen with these things. The first version tends to be brought out by an indie developer and they make it hardcore, and then the second attracts a big publisher, loads of money, and the publishers get hold of it, and they're like, no, 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 we need to make it so everybody can play with this, so we can get all the people buying it, and we make loads of cash. And they try to make it for everyone, and it appeals to no one. That's what tends to happen. I hope you're right, Donald. I really do. I really do hope that they stick to their roots and make it as difficult as it should be. Because if, if you're not struggling, trying to build rocket ships and get them into space, something's not right. So you want to be 9,000 feet at Cagoo. It's 
So 9,000 feet is our next altitude. Let's face it, the real appeal of KSB is when things go wrong. <laughs> right? That is where the fun is. Building stuff that flies only happens when you build lots of things that don't. <laughs> If you want something difficult, play EVE Online. Nah. That's not for me. Never forget, I fell to Earth much slower than previous times. I'll never forget, like getting into getting into almost orbit and then running out of fuel, or getting into orbit and realizing you don't have enough fuel for a retro burn. You know, or you can't get to the planet you was trying to get to. <laughs> All the things that could go wrong. DR Yoshi 1998. Wait, is that a rename Yoshi? You can make colonies in this one, that's the big focus. My goal in KSP when I used to make videos on it, I wanted to build a space station. And that's what I did. I started assembling something around Earth, which had like massive fuel canisters on it. And a place where you could have kerbals. And you could basically then fly up, refuel, and off you go. But the problem was, in the game back then, and the CPUs and all the rest of it, was as soon as you got a decent sized space station, and you needed a mod to like have pieces properly connect things together anyway. The whole thing used to go like, really laggy like your fps would tank when you got near it because of all the physics calculations on a modern cpu it could probably cope with it now peter to dre one day one day and a few hours till my name is changed Don't ever do that bet again. <laughs> Teddy, thank you for eight months. Right, let's do some maths, guys. We're at 24,000 feet. And our next waypoint is Kagoo. And that's, we want to be at 9,000 feet when we get to Kagoo. So we're at 24. We want to get to there at 9. When do we start descending? Amazing pizza, yeah. Correct, Neo. 
So that drop is 15,000. 24 to 9,000 is 15. Ignore the thousands on the end. It's 15. Times it by 3 is 45. Easy way to do it is to round up. Add another 10%. You can calculate the extra bit you need. But 50 nautical out is good. So we're 57 already. Which means that we're very shortly we're going to have to start descending. Well, you normally assume a 3 degree glide scope, Mr. Chu. Okay, so here's the next question then. What V speed do we want to descend at? The correct answer was about 1500 feet per minute. How do we know that? Because our ground speed is 300 knots. If you divide, ignore the 5, right? Just, just keep the 30. Divide that by 2, you get 15. You want 1500 feet per minute. And if you do that, you get a nice 3 degree glide. As long as you're doing that ground speed. As that changes, and it will change as we descend, as that changes, you need to adjust the V-speed. But it's not, not an exact descent, but it's a pretty good one. Anyway, we've just passed 50, so we'll go V-speed. Descend 1500. And we'll just watch the speeds. We could pull back on the throttle if we want, save some fuel. Notice it's gone up a little bit. So you could go to 16 if you wanted to. And the bizarre thing is that works in like all planes. <laughs> just math. It's weird. It'll average out as... Yeah, as you descend, it'll slow down. Let's see. Uh, why are we so far off the nav track? Oh, because I didn't... I didn't put the whole plan into um, fourth line. I didn't insert the flight plans here properly. There we go. It's got the waypoints now. It was showing me as miles off course. <laughs> he was able to descend 20,000 feet in 20 nautical miles. Lol. <laughs> I take it had failures turned off. So your plane didn't just tear itself apart. So we started at what, 50? So at 25, we should be about 16-ish if we're on profile. Also, that ground speed's come down. 
So we'll go back to um, 1500. Failures are on, and it didn't actually tear itself apart. That's crazy. Even the even the cabin pressure, you'd probably risk him passing out, right? What kind of G's were you pulling? Very pitch propellers. Hey, <laughs> well they are a different story altogether, Muko. Look at that. 3004 and it reckoned 3044. So the live is not quite matching up in flights in with what four flights get in. But it's not a million miles away. If it's going to take a hammering on the site slows down, well, we'll see. Some people will get bored with it. Some people will apply and not even play. Wait, you went full flaps and gear down and then dove 20,000 feet? And you didn't exceed the VFE speed? How do you manage that? increase our descent rate because we're a little bit above profile I think So I've taken you, we want Wiccan at 4,000. Now we're back on profile now, we're good. Use parachutes as well. <laughs> yeah, he didn't mention that. X-56 Hotas. Wasn't that the overpriced version of the X-55? I'm pretty certain. Like, I'm sure I've got an X-55. In the shed. <laughs> I should probably put it on eBay. I'm pretty certain they had an X-55 and they brought out I think that's when Logitech got involved with SciTech and they brought out the 56 
and it's exactly the same as 55 except it had some like blue highlights on it and the price went from about 140 quid to well over 200 quid and it was literally the same thing You ate your last bit of pizza so the sun will shine on your next flight. <laughs> uh, Raladin, thank you for two years. Happy anniversary, sir. Enjoy the golden acorn. Cytec was bought out by Logitech. And if you've noticed, they've changed all the branding now from Cytec to Logitech, but it's basically the same thing. Never used a Pro, an X52 Pro, I don't think. You got the 56 fairly recently, it was 220. Yeah, so the 55 before it was almost the same thing, and it was way cheaper. It was literally 70 quid cheaper. They put the price up 50%. Three miles to go, and we're about to hit profile. Nice. So we should be right over the top. There you go. F Kagoo. Uh oh. I need to get the charging lead for my iPad. It's on 10%. <laughs> 10% battery. Luckily, I ordered some cables yesterday. I needed um, a, uh, what do they call it? A lightning cable. I need an extra long lightning cable to reach a charging point from here, and they arrived, so I think I'll go and grab it in a sec. Right, next waypoint down was 44,000 feet, so we'll move that to 4,000. Free speed. About 1,100 feet should do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Microsoft Flight Sim has um, caused a lot of issues with the hardware side of things. Now, after this, we're going to have to start thinking about the vector. It's a vector ourselves in for a visual. Your X55's twist axis broke two weeks out of warranty. Oh my god, dude. I hate it when stuff breaks, like, just outside of warranty. There you go, turbulence again. As if there's people like just randomly living here. Look at this. Look, just guy just living there. How does that work? I'm just going to put it in heading mode a second. And then we're going to bring up the 
lock for your while. We're going to put that onto a course. Okay, I'm being stupid here. Why doesn't that turn? We sent a CDI. Why isn't that turn? I should be able to send the course dial on that. Curious. I was going to set it onto two zero just to. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. I was going to set it onto 2 zero just to give us a, a heading waypoint for the runway. Yeah, it's a squirrel. So we're coming up on 4,000, which is where we want to be. Cove elevation was 194. So we're going to be aiming for about 2,000 feet. We should be able to get ourselves to fix. To slow down now. There is no ILS, I don't think. Didn't see one on the approach chart. So we're trying to basically vector ourselves in for a 2-0 approach though. <coughs> Link for the liveries. Go to my livery video. There's a link in the description. So yeah, we did say on the brief that we're going to hit for that lake, which is perfect. Why does that not move? It's so weird. There's the lake right in front of us. Is that the runway there, possibly? Uh, goat friend, they tend to inject everything now. Even cars, fuel injection. It's just more efficient. Go right over the top of that dam. Nice.
the Mega Pack come with version 8, has 156 deliveries. My, I unpacked it two days ago, it was 2 gigabytes of deliveries. 2 gigabytes. It's insane how, how many deliveries the community's done. It's unreal. Are they good? Well, that's one of them. <laughs> They're not bad. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, the man dude, thank you very much for subbing. Welcome to the house, sir. She's so naggy. So because of this hill, we're a bit high, and I need to get some drag in. Let's hold the altitude and get the flaps in. Okay, three greens, inertial separator on. We're gonna have fun getting this in. Uh, depends on the payload. Sugoku, the caravan can be very slow on a climb. I haven't rang you saying anything otherwise. Covid test on Monday next. What's wrong with a Covid test? I've had one. It's no big deal. Mile final runway two zero. Off your surgery. All oh, right. So if you come, if you come back as positive, you can't have your surgery. Hundred. <laughs> Welcome to Twitch.
It's a bit bouncy again. Thank you, Camp's Influence. What would you have done if it wasn't, though? Change the sound bites. Taxi away coming up. <laughs> that time, honestly, I don't know how he does it. to park. Flight complete. Got to use that low latency. <laughs> It says 2MP in the news. Rumors said they want to promote 2.5. Promote is out and still no MP. Well, I don't know. I don't know, Mr. Chu. I've not kept up on the TMP side of things. Uh, loaded gun, welcome to Twitch, sir. Anyone else have a VFR map that bugs out? Uh, I've had the bug where you have to get the VFR map and resize it for it to... Um, uh, there's like a problem where you can't click any buttons and you resize the VFR map and you can click the buttons again. It's a weird one. waiting for us. Stop it. Licking the plate of pepperoni on it. Tinker. Uh, Valesius, feel free to suggest, mate. Thank you. What's the download for liveries? <clears throat> Have a look in my YouTube video. to get a charge in there for this iPod, it's about to die. It's an Amazon delivery today. 
to pack it, and you bring it. Well, you know what I mean? Uh, what happens to a VFR pilot when they need to use the restroom during a flight plan? During a flight plan or during a flight? Is it possible to have the G1000 on an external view or is it only in cockpit? So what you can do... Let's put the avionics back on. Stop beeping. Yeah, can you open it up? It's, yeah, uh, maybe. If you hold the right alt key, not the left one, but the right alt key, if you and then click on the window, you end up like that. So if you hold the right alt key, but not the left, you will get a pop-up window and you can put this on a separate monitor or whatever. Which I think is a trick that not... Microsoft didn't really publish it. And I don't think it's, like, well-known, really. There we go. So one of these, one of these should be three meters long. I'm guessing that one. Right alt, hold down the right alt key and then left click. That's what you want to do. Yeah, the left alt key doesn't work bizarrely enough. No idea why. iPad's on 4% battery. You know what I do? Oh, hang on. Right. Just gonna plug that in there. Route that around there for now. Figure it out later. I guess a stream deck. you lose amperes before you reach your iPod. Well, it's losing amperes at a rate of knots, so it won't do any harm. Score 1305 and Taco Loco, thank you for subbing, guys. Welcome. Uh, I'm just going to step away for a few minutes. I need to have a bio break and um, find a key ring for Mrs. Squirrel. <laughs> Back in a sec. No, I'm going to plug it in now. Yeah, he's charging.
I'm back. How come the car park is visible from the outside? I think it's an option, isn't it? If I remember. I think there's like some... Uh, I remember seeing some options somewhere. Flight model. Hey, yeah, co-pilot avatar. So, pilot four. Default. Looks like you can't turn them off, bizarrely enough. Which is weird. Uh, what is the name of the payout policy used on the tablet for flight planning? That's uh, four flight. Four flights good in the States. So it kind of depends where you want to fly around. All right, let's have a look at what's going on in the land of FS economy. There ain't an awful lot going out of Cove. So I think we have one... Oh, I've got three nutters to take down to KWVI. And then one back to Cove. Five Cabal Air Cargoes. So this what this hop is 154 nautical. So if we say 170, that's going to take 32 gallons. We have 86 on board, so fuel's fine. I suspect we lost money on that flight. Oh, we got paid, actually. That was my flight. That was my flight. So what we're doing, guys, with, um, with our squirrel is... We're building up some like tools behind the scenes that we can run reports on our squirrel so we can find out like what planes are making us money um what's the most profitable and also you see like everybody that's flying the planes in our squirrel we're like working out who who's earning the most and that kind of thing because what i want to do is have like um i don't know i was thinking of doing thinking of just basically doing it where we can somehow reward reward people like the top earners or whatever the top flyers or something uh with like a i don't know some kind of monthly monthly giveaway or something like that is what i'm thinking because there's some guys like are bringing in some like they're, they're flying loads of stuff and they're bringing in money for the company which is obviously letting us buy more planes like we we bought another tbm this week uh, so we've got three tbms now two caravans so we're doing pretty well um, but yeah, I want to sort of have some kind of fun reward type thing going on. Yeah, I don't, I'm li literally just getting into it all, uh, Gimp from Lord, but I know you can pull the data. We've got some nice reports on the planes. Uh, some of them are doing really well, um, surprisingly. <laughs> Do you think they'll end up adding, adding larger aircraft like 747? Um, I believe the 747 is in. FSC. I think the larger aircraft are in here, but I don't think. Like, if you click on a typical airfield, right, and say, well, if you was in a 747 or even an A320, like, what the heck are you going to fly out of here that's going to make that money? I think one of the one of the big earners is um, like a Dash, a Dash 8Q400, but you have to be very specific about where you fly. Most of the jobs that you'll see are a short a short haul jobs i don't think the i don't think fs economy is really set up for the bigger aircraft I, I just can't see how you would make it work unless i'm missing something well yeah you can do the pilot for higher ones yeah you can do those there's like a pilot for hire job where they pay for the plane and the passengers and they give you like a fee for the flight so you can do that the all-in-one flight But yeah, it's a bit of a shame, really. It'd be, it'd be nice if the thing scaled to, like, full airports and 
you know, terminals and proper carriers. I think it'd be really cool if we could get into all that. Uh, King Awesome, thank you for 61 months. I ordered a stream deck and after a week of using it, I'm very happy with it. I have it set up for pretty much every game I play. I've never heard of it, so that you showed it off, so thank you. Dude, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, the biggest plan you can rent is the ERJ 700. Hmm. When you asked about adding cargo variants of some aircraft, you meant adding them to Microsoft Flight Sim. Oh, you mean like liveries and stuff, or yeah, like blocking out the windows on an A320 and that kind of thing. Yeah, I see what you mean. Right, let's get set up. So we're going to be going Cove to KWVI. Reset the flight plan. So that's going to be the flight. It's going to smack right through a TFR. In fact, it flies right through two TFRs at the moment. <laughs> well, I mean, look at that. It's right over that class Bravo. You know, if you was doing this on Pilot Edge, that would be pretty. If you didn't fly that IFR, you'd have a lot of fun <laughs> trying to VFR that. <laughs> so look at what um, if it's uh, four flight thinks of it. So we'll clear that. Go Cove to KWVI. 153 nautical, exactly the same. Can we get can we get Sky Vector to put together a quick route for us? On route charts. How do you get Sky Vector to generate a flight plan or can't you? Does it not do it? Briefings and filings, nav log. <laughs> I wonder if Pilot Edge actually activates those TFRs. I bet they do. I'm, I'm curious to see if we can get this to um, create some kind of routing or whether we have to use Simbrief. Where it says routes. That's got something here. What's this? Okay, interesting. It's generated something. Something that takes us smack into the TFR. That's doing some kind of yubba departure, isn't it? There must be a departure for Cove. Procedures. Nope, there's nothing in here. Interesting. So it goes via yubba and then ILA. Does it not offer any other routes? Like, where's it getting that route from anyway? You recently bought the new flight sim, but it keeps stuttering. You need to, like, tune it a bit. Fuzzball, thanks for 27 months. That goes through a TFR, blimey. Surface to 7,000. So if you can be over 7,000, which I reckon we can, we'll be fine. This one goes surface to 4,500. That's a problem. We'll have to cut that short. Right, let's um, get out of here. A TFR is a temporary flight restriction, so basically, if it's red, you need to look at it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, I've not been restarting every time, but I like to restart regularly. The sim just seems to perform better for me. Look at that. Malted milk biscuit. Oh, yeah. Do you know what? I think I remember Whiteland telling me they don't have these in Norway. I could be wrong. That's nice. I think they said they're going to address the um, the startup time of the sim as well. Make it a bit quicker. Not really floating, fat man. This route that comes in flies via like a named waypoint, which in this case is like Vinco. So you can't just drag it outside. You'll need to vector it differently. Like, so what we'll do is we'll use that VOR. So we'll grab that and we'll go maybe there like that. So we'll change our flight plan. So what I'm saying is you can't just... You can't just move it out. You need to find something else. Like, that's a GPS named location. I don't know if, I'm, if they mentioned the CJ4. Kelly Chris, thank you for seven months. Surface to 3,000 feet. AGL, a baseball game. <laughs> game begins at 2010 Zulu. You can't overfly when there's a baseball game on. That's amazing. <laughs> Padres at Athletics, D-backs at Giants. Two baseball games on, guys. Is that a home run? <laughs> 3,000. Yeah, not to 3,000 feet, just in case somebody decides to, like, you know, Smack the ball to 3,000 feet, AGL. Kelly Chris, thank you for seven. <laughs> That's brill. Nah, they just don't want any aircraft flying over and making noise, basically. If they didn't have that there, they'd probably have loads of GA pilots going, Oh, look, it's the game's on. Just keep constantly flying over the top and annoying everybody. Um, hmm. Try that one. Let's give that a bash. Yeah, I, well, I'm not sure about the terrorist side of things, you know. Gaming mad. Thank you for subbing. Welcome. Um, what's gonna do? Oh yeah, cove. That's what I was gonna do. Ramp 11 sounds good. Flight conditions live. We'll put live traffic on. For the lols. And that should be it. Don't they sometimes have blimps over stadiums? Well, it may well be. It may well be that's why the restrictions though. If they've got something else floating over the top, like you say.
So what's the routing on this? We got Skel Yoba, ILA. Oak. There we go, so that plan looks vaguely like that one now. Uh, there's no helicopters currently. Why does that look like it's got pieces? What the... <laughs> What the heck was this polygon count? What's this? Did you see that? <laughs> what? Please tell me that's genuinely broken. How does that livery it must be delivery. <laughs> I've got like the 50 polygon version of a TBM. What the heck? Oh, no, wait. Look, it just suddenly went, oh, yeah. Oh, I remember now. Polygons. I remember how to draw those. I have never seen anything like that before. That was incredible. Callum, thank you, 15 months. <laughs> hey, my cross better than that. That was nuts. Okay, we've got all the stuff inside as well, which is good. <laughs> 